Welcome back to another one-on-one -on -one session of the Treehouse. Today we have a special guest, uh, Honor Vincent. Uh, Honor, if people who don't know, you never heard of you before, how would you describe yourself? Uh, I am a writer born and bred in and around New York City who writes comics and also some poetry and prose, uh, but mainly comics uh, and mainly about sci-fi and weird animals uh, with a little bit of historical fantasy thrown in. Amazing, amazing. And one of the, the things I wanted to talk in this episode to be about is specifically about writing about New York City. You know, the, the, the location that we, I imagine, grew up in or born in and we want to, in a sense, give back and tell a story and get people excited about it. Is, is, is this all true? Did you, were you born in New York City? I was. So I was born in Flushing, um, just in the shadow of Shea Stadium, which I won't call it City Field because that's not its name. Um, <laughs> And then I moved out to Long Island when I was three or four with my parents, uh, grew up out there, went to high school, and then came back in for college. So I went to went to CUNY, CUNY school, whoop, um, and then, yeah, came back shortly after that and started renting, and I am still here today. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm one of those people that I've, I've, I've tr I actually did after I graduated from college and went to NYU as well in the city. And then I, I took a road trip, all right, a, a cross country road trip from New York to LA, ended up in LA, but you know, I had all the states in between. Uh -huh. And I saw everything, and nothing feels like home in like New York City. <laughs> I mean, uh, Dude, so I did the opposite. Too small. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I went to LA for a few months after college also, and then we drove back. The, we did the southern route, which was mm -hmm. it was beautiful, but yeah, nothing quite I didn't quite like it. Um, and I did I did study abroad in college, so I did six months in London, which is probably the closest to New York City mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Because again, it's a massive, <laughs> massive city, um, and it was fun. Yeah, no, and it just uh, it reminded me how you know sometimes uh, people you know, people have different opinions on New York, but, but to me, I always feel like it's home. I feel, I and also feel very, for some reason, I feel very safe because there's so many people around at all times. And for some reason, <laughs> I, oh my God. Okay. So I, my husband's from Iowa. He grew up in a town that it was like, I think it's like 85 people or something. And his parents live in, like out in the middle of a bunch of farmland. So when we visited the first time, I, you know, like it's, it was so quiet. There was like a ringing in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> and I started freaking out. And then when my mom, my mom went out um, like last year to visit with us and she was like, well, what if something happens to somebody? Yes, like, yes. what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And again, New York City, you can walk like two blocks and you can mm -hmm. find everything in either direction. You know, everything you want. There's movie theaters, there's food, there's grocery stuff, literally anything you wanted to do. There's bars and, and you know restaurants and stuff. So yeah, they, you know, I always, I always enjoyed it. But then, you know, recently, and I, I was inspired by uh, Pat Chan originally, but now of you, of course, as well, about writing a story about New York. And I wanted to write something that was like a love letter to New York City. Um, and uh, it's coming out next month, actually. And it's called uh, Rush New York City. And it was uh, it's a, it's like a contemplation or of time and how, you know, they call about the New York Minute and how it's always so fast. I wanted to really explore and delve into that that story. Um, but um, how did you just want to talk about your story, which is also based on New York, and it's uh, New Rat City, which, which is a clever mm -hmm. pun of, of New York City. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so New Rat City is about a near future New York. So we're in like 2083. Uh, and it came, I think it, it came from a bunch of different places. It's kind of like a, you know, conglomeration of my experiences as a kid when my dad was an exterminator hearing all of his stories living here for my whole life um growing up and then living very close to the water and being there when hurricane sandy hit and kind of watching the neighborhood flood out and just thinking like what you know we've been told after you know hurricane sandy and irene and the the rain this past year that like flooded out a bunch of Brooklyn and Queens mm. out of nowhere, um, like the city is not ready for all of that. And what happens if it never gets ready? That that's kind of like the seed of it. It was like, all right, what if we don't get our shit together, and we don't, you know, figure out how to adapt to climate and more rainfall and more flooding? And what if that does happen? Kind of what would the city look like? And who would still be here? That's really like, you know, I I have met so many people living here. And um, with, I think like 
Baruch going to college aside, because that was like really a lot of New Yorkers went to school there. Um, mm-hmm. A lot there, most of the people I meet who are like around our age aren't from here. So it's like a place that people migrate to and live here for a while. And I think, you know, there, it, there's just a lot of churn. So I was thinking like, what if, what, what does the city look like when that dies? Like, will it die? Who's left? It's going to be people probably like my family who on my dad's side has been here for like five generations and are still renting apartments and like, you know, just clinging on and, and kind of what, what would everything be if, if things were that way? Um, and then, yeah, the supernatural thing came from doing a lot of reading about, you might like this book, it's called Manhattan. It's about like the mm-hmm. deeper ecological history of the island uh, of Manhattan. Um, but they think that Manhattan and the outlying islands had the same kind of biodiversity as the rainforest at one point because of just where it is and the, and the, um, the ecosystem here. Mm-hmm. So I was like, cool. Okay. So what if that comes back? Like the human stuff dies out, but that starts coming back. And, and what would it look like at that overlap point? So that's where, that's where the book came from. That was the, the seed of it. No, that's that's great. And, um, you know, one thing that kind of inspired me, you also have rats in your city, which I think is, is very cool. Yeah. And it's because, mm-hmm. you know, it's that New York City's experiences, you know what I'm saying? There's actually a rat in my story. And it's something that I, you know, it's when you're talking about New York, you want to bring up these, these Easter eggs about things that you recognize and really give back to it. I just want to share something that I looked at when I was coming up with, with my New York story. And it is none other than the great uh, Will Eisner's uh, the big uh, New York, the big city. Have nice. You read this book? I haven't. Oh, man. I got to get it. You got it. You got it. Because it, he, he tells a story of anthologies about New York City and he gets deep in and he really, you know, he understands New York City. He grew up here as well. And he really just tries to, uh, he tries to he tries to replicate the feeling of New York City in every single, uh, you know, story, short story he tells. And it's yeah, it's a, c- a combination of short stories told in you know his 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 classic uh, comedy, uh, you know, comic style. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things is that he just really just draws what he sees, right? That's what his uh, his favorite thing to do there was. Um, and yeah, it, it really kind of. There's just so it really made me open my mind, my mind about like what is happening in New York City. Let me go out. Let me look and let yeah. me really experience uh, something more that, you know, different people also provides an opportunity for people outside New York to to experience New York if they have never done it. You know, kind of like how, how movie how movies can do it sometimes, but you don't really get into the nitty gritty sometimes like you can in art and in comics. So that was uh, like a big inspiration for me. I'm sure it was for you. But one thing I wanted to ask was, did you question, and you kind of did it with, with do New Rat City, did you question that you would isolate uh, or alienate uh, other readers who aren't from New York when you were coming up with their title? So I, I think I was more worried about isolating people who really didn't want to read a book about rats and roaches and stuff, <laughs> which I think is maybe a bigger, like, what you know, and, and I get it, you know, the covers of the books are like swarms both you know, so this is part one and part two it's so like you know we got oh my god it's mirrored so we've got swarms and swarms and like that's not everybody's so. cup of tea and i get that um so that that was more and i i bet too there you know people who might like the story and there aren't rats on every panel but there are a lot of them um <laughs> we were a little like icked out by that but i mean for new york city i i wanted to make it true to the city that i know and love and you know, come from, but I did that. I tried to do that through the way characters talk to and relate to one another. Mm-hmm. There's not like that much inside baseball, but there are, I think like we were talking about yesterday, like there's definitely like winks to, if you know, you know, like you'll, you'll recognize places um, that, that the characters just move through. Um, so like the George Washington bridge is now the Bloomberg bridge. Um, there's like the United Palace theater is, is in there and that's where all the exterminators have their meetings. Um, Cause that was really close to where I used to live. So like, this is now um, like New York city pest protection, but it's still this big, beautiful theater. Um <laughs> So, you know, they're just, they're kind of living in, I, I think part of two of like the visual stuff of the book came from, I visited Rome a couple of years ago, like before pandemic stuff. And it's like, wow, that might be what happens to New York City one day is like, you have these ancient ruins and that's fine, separate from everything else. And then people kind of live around it and like, 
all right, get on with your life. No, that's so true. Wait, but your story is only a few years uh, past us, right? 2083, you said, or? Yeah, so 60, 60 years on. 60 years. Right. You think we're going to fall to the to, to Roman ruins in 60 years? Or? I don't know, but, you know, there was, a, there was a long middle phase in Rome where they were, you know, like medieval Rome and stuff where they were they were living around everything. Um, might, be the, might be the start of it. It's a bold prediction, that's for sure. Yeah, prediction. <laughs> I hope no. not. I, I, you know, and I really enjoy it. I think that, um, you know, when you get into comic shops, I don't know if you already are in, um, um, but I, I, my, my entire tactic was that, you know, this is a, this is a story for New York and I want, you know, the, it's the New York shops, the New York readership to really rally around this, these titles about New York, kind of like Rogers New York. Um, and even at New York Comic Con, you know, kind of gonna, uh, I think people are, you know, when they see the I Love New York City shirts, you know, it's a classic, right? Mm -hmm. Or we kind of make a book about New York, kind of rally that sentiment or, you know, kind of uh, go for that feeling and vibe. I'm like, yeah, you know, this is New York and this is kind of um, like, it's not really touristy, but it's something that will attract not only people in it, but hopefully other people who want to really learn about New York and, and get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, yeah, anything um, else you can uh, you, you want to say uh, about about writing about uh, New York City? Um, and do you think you're going to tell more stories about New York City in the future? I'm sure I will. I think it kind of infects everything. You know, I do a little bit like that kind of sensibility. Um, there is a, a book. My next series that I that I start working on is going to be sci fi much further in the future, like, you know, a thousand years in the future. Um, but I, I do have a story that I've been like thinking about for years now that is that is sort of a ghost story set in set in an apartment building. So that's a, that's when I really want to figure out exactly how I want to do it. Um, but yeah, I think like like you were saying, it's there is a perspective, I think, that comes with living here for a long time of mm -hmm. like, yeah, you feel safe in large groups. And it's, um, you know, it's it's a very unique perspective perspective not to be too like New York is the best because um, I know a lot of people are very smug about it um, and other places are great too and they have their own perspectives I love reading stories from people who are from totally different places because it's like ah cool yeah I never would have seen the world like that you know just like somebody else might not be like oh yeah that you know a floodplain is an inherently dangerous place like they just don't have that like I don't know anything about the desert like I love reading mm -hmm. stuff about that so I think it's cool it's like a nice way to kind of you know no, broaden, so broaden the way you're thinking about it if you have to talk to somebody I else want to it. end off by asking you one class question. What is your favorite spot in New York City? Well, if somebody comes, where do you recommend they go? Where, where do you personally enjoy uh, spending time? Wow. Okay. I have a lot. Um, I'm going to try. Uh, I'm going to pick two. So <laughs> <laughs> number one is Fort Tryon Park. It is gorgeous. Uh, it's at the very top of Manhattan. It is like it feels like you're kind of on a cliffside. It's really, really beautiful. Um, and the Cloisters Museum is in there. There's gorgeous gardens. It's really neat. The other place is the Roosevelt Island tram. Uh, so I live on Roosevelt Island. Uh, I think it's great here. And there's a little tram, like a ski lift that goes right next to the Queensboro Bridge. Um, and you can see kind of if you look south from it, you can see the whole, you know, city and the East River. And it's really, really beautiful. So if you come visit, do that tram. It's just a Metro card swipe. Um, and it's great. Oh, amazing. Thank you for coming aboard the Trias Hanging Out with us in a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> session. And, uh, you know, it was great meeting a fellow New Yorker. I'm always excited to come yeah. meet comic creators, but the New Yorkers as well. <laughs> uh, have a great day.